So if you own a 15 to 18 3.5 liter EcoBoost F-150, basically you're looking for one of the most affordable closed element intakes in order to get some better horsepower and torque out of this very capable motor, you should be checking out SMB's colder intake with their oiled filter. This is again one of the most affordable closed element designs. Now you might be wondering why you want a closed air box as opposed to an open element air box. Well, open element air boxes look cool, but they don't insulate as well as the closed ones do. What I like about this one is it retains the factory inlet, so you're getting the coldest and densest air possible, which is gonna give you the biggest gains. Speaking of gains, we actually ran our truck on the dyno, we did a bone stock run, and our truck made 300 horsepower and 344 pound-feet of torque. We then installed the SMB colder intake and nothing else, and we actually saw some pretty impressive gains. We saw 328 horsepower and 353 pound-feet of torque, which makes repeat gains of 28 horsepower and nine pound-feet of torque. What's even nicer about that is you get some pretty impressive curve gains. Curve gains are awesome because that's actually what you're gonna feel when you mash on the pedal at the light. It's what you're gonna feel when you're cruising around as well. Now, price isn't the only consideration, and there are obviously a lot of closed element intakes to choose from. But a couple other reasons why I like the SMB in particular is because of how it looks. It retains factory configuration, and it matches all the other trim underneath the hood. So if you're not looking for something that's too flashy, you want something that blends in and almost looks like a factory upgrade, the SMB is a great choice. Now, closed elements can be a little bit boring. Obviously, the open element designs look cool because you can see the air filter. Usually, they have some flashy plumbing underneath there, and the air box is not going to hide it anything. Now SMB addressed that with this really cool plexiglass window. That's one of the few options available in the category that does allow you to still see the air element inside as a closed element design. And this is an oiled filter, so this is a nice way to check up on it, make sure you don't need to clean it or re-oil it. Other reason why I like the SMB a lot is because it installs very easily. It retains some of the factory plumbing. All you're changing out is the factory Y-pipe tubing as well as the factory air box, which does retain all the factory hardware, by the way, so there's no custom modification required. You also don't have to tune your truck because it is a speed density setup. It is not a mass airflow sensor. However, keep in mind a tune is optional. So for that reason, I'm gonna give the install a very easy one out of three wrenches on my patented difficulty meter. You should be able to get this installed in the driveway with basic hand tools in about an hour or two if you take your time. So if you like the performance gains from the SMB and you like the price, which I'm certainly a big fan, you should stick around. I'm going to show you the install step by step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To install your new intake, you will need the following tools. A drive ratchet, a 7mm socket, an 8mm socket, a 13mm socket, a pry tool or flathead screwdriver. Optional but helpful tools include an extension, a cordless impact, and a spray lubricant. So before we install our new intake, we have to remove some of our factory hardware. I'm talking about the factory intake tube right here. There's a couple of band clamps holding it in place. You're gonna need a seven millimeter socket to remove those clamps. It's also helpful to have an extension because one of those clamps is hidden down here. Might be a bit difficult to get to, but I'll show you where it is. Now when you go to pull off the intake tube, you want to be careful. There is an intake temperature sensor right here. Go ahead and make sure you disconnect that as you pull the tube out of the vehicle. All right, with the intake tube removed, next step is removing the factory air box. There are two push pins up front here. You need to pop those loose with a plastic pry tool or a flathead screwdriver. There's also a 13 millimeter socket retaining the air box to the vehicle inside the fender well. So you'll need a 13 millimeter socket to remove that. Once you pop the push pins out and that 13 millimeter socket, make sure you pull this little wire guide off the back of the air box so you can remove the entire assembly as one piece. out real quick. So as you can see, the SMB is actually pretty similar to the factory setup. That makes the install pretty straightforward. Now, before we actually install our new intake, we do have to do a couple of things here on the table. We're gonna set up our new intake tube with our rubber grommets and our band clamps, and we're also gonna install our intake temperature sensor. We pulled it out of our factory tube here. You just gotta twist it by hand. You're also gonna grab the rubber grommet included in the kit, feed it into the hole on the new intake tube. You're gonna slide your intake temperature sensor in before we install everything else.
Now that we have our intake temperature sensor installed with that rubber grommet, we're going to install the rubber couplers that secure the new intake tube to the vehicle. To do that, you're going to grab both of the rubber grommets you see here. The large one goes on this end, smaller one goes on this end. You're going to secure those with the band clamps in the kit of the appropriate size. Keep in mind, we do go up from a 7mm socket on the factory tube to an 8mm socket for these new clamps. All right, our intake tube is now set up. Next step is setting up our air box. We have to pull some hardware off the factory one and move it over to the new one. Specifically, I'm referring to the rubber grommet right here. That's gonna secure the 13 millimeter bolt for the new air box inside the fender well. You're gonna pop it out as one piece. You're gonna to wanna to remove the metal retainer that's inside of here, put the rubber grommet in the new box first, and then slide that metal piece back in. All right, with that 13 millimeter rubber grommet installed on our air box, we can install the rubber inlet. The rubber inlet goes on this plastic lip right here. Once you've slid that on, line up the holes with the rubber and the plastic and attach it using these interlocking plastic rivets. One of them goes on the inside of each hole and one goes on the outside. Once you put them together, just clip them onto each other. All right, with the grommet on the inlet set up, we can install the oval coupler for the primary inlet on the new intake tube. This slides over this end of the air box right here, and you're gonna secure it using the largest band clamp in the kit. Alright, our intake tube and our air box are now finally set up and ready for install. We're going to start with the air box, throw it in our truck, goes in the same way the factory one came out. Alright, so like I said earlier, the new air box installs the way the factory one came out. There's two little plastic retainers on the bottom of this box. I want to line those up with the two little rubber grommets inside the fender well and press down. Once it's pressed down, you want to secure the air box. You're going to reuse that 13 millimeter bolt and it's going to go in the same spot where the factory one was. The kit comes with two new plastic push pins. Those secure the rubber inlet right here. All right, our air box is secured. A couple final steps here. We're gonna install our filter with our intake tube. The filter is a bit of a tight fit, but you're gonna orient it vertically like so, and you're gonna put it in this hole down here. Once you do that, just let it sit inside the air box. You're gonna feed the intake tube through the rubber grommet we installed on the air box. I'm actually gonna lube this up with some WD-40 because it is rubber on plastic. So lubing it up will make it easier to line everything up together.
And once your new air filter is tightened down on your intake tube, next step is getting the intake tube tightened down on your factory inlet tubes. Again, you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to tighten those clamps down, and it's a little bit of a tight space in here, so if you were using power tools, you might have to use a ratchet like this one. All right, our air intake system is technically installed. Last thing we gotta do is plug in our air intake temperature sensor that we installed in our new intake tube earlier. All right, now that our intake temperature sensor is plugged back in, we can install the plexiglass cover for our air filter. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten this down. So as you can see, the SMB does install quite easily with basic hand tools. Shouldn't take you more than an hour or two, and that's if you're taking your time. That also wraps up my review of the SMB Colder intake with the oiled filter, fitting your 15 through 18 3.5 liter EcoBoost powered F-150. I'm Travis, thanks for watching, and for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.